Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jack. Today we're going to talk about a Hall Effect device and how easy it is to use in model railroading and other applications. So let's get started. Okay, today I'm going to talk about the Hall Effect sensor that's known as a digital sensor. There are analog sensors that detect magnet, magnetic fields and there's digital sensors. The one we're going to talk about is the Hall Effect sensor 3144 and it is strictly a digital sensor. So what does this look like? Well the 3144 is got only three pins. It looks like a transistor. Uh, it has a 5 volt pin, a ground, and a digital output. The 5 volt pin actually can be anywhere from 5 to maybe as high as 24 volts but 5 volts is the normal recommended power for it. Number Pin number 2 is ground, and number 3 is the output, either high or low. Uh, it goes high if a magnet is detected. It goes low if there's no magnet detected. And the output voltage is typically equal to operating voltage. Uh, they're, they're about $0.69 cents a piece on Amazon if you buy them in lots of 10. Okay, here's the simple circuit. That's uh, so all that's necessary to detect a uh, magnetic field. Uh, five volts goes to pin one of the sensor. Pin two is ground. And pin three connects to this arrangement. The R1 or 10K resistor is a pull-up resistor. So the output of the Hall sensor is a, a transistor, and this pulls it up, pulls up the uh, collector of the transistor. Um, this capacitor is for noise reduction, especially if you have over, uh, overly long lead lengths between the sensor and the circuitry that you're, you're connecting it to. Um, one thing I should mention is that if you hook up a uh, LED to it, then you're not going to have the full 5 volts across this. You're going to have a voltage divider of 10K um, feeding the uh, LED which, depending on the LED, could be anywhere from uh, 2 to 3 or 4 volts. So just keep that in mind. You can also connect the digital output to a transistor switch to switch higher loads. If you want to see how to do that, uh, look at my tutorial on making a uh, transistor switch. You can hook it up to an op amp, in which case the op amp would have very high input impedance, and you'd get the full uh, 5 volts across the output here, and uh, in close to uh, zero volts when the output is low. Okay, what are some of the uh, uses for this? Well, uh, one obvious use is train detection in model railroads. Uh, if you put a, a magnet in the in a car, then as the car goes by the sensor, um, the sensor picks it up and responds to it. Um, I would recommend, and I've used uh, neodymium magnets, which they're very powerful and have good magnetic strength, so you don't have to be that close to the sensor. Uh, you can all use it, also use this to not just detect uh, trains or cars going by a particular point, but positioning trains on a siding in a yard. If you have two sensors, you can position the train or the car uh, between the two sensors fairly accurately. I've also used this in my rain gauge. I've had a rain gauge for a number of years, and the reed switch died out on me a couple of times, and I've had to replace it. Instead, I've used a Hall Effect sensor, and it's all solid state, so I don't have to worry about the reed switch dying again. They're also used to sense speed, direction, and position of a motor shaft. Uh, the sensors are also used in door and windows for security purposes, even used in keyboards and in bicycles as a speed sensor. Okay, let's go down now and, and uh, go to the lab. And I have uh, a circuit breadboarded, the circuit we just talked about. I have it breadboarded, and we can see how it works. Okay, here we have the circuit that we were just talking about, and uh, a, a voltmeter to measure the voltage of the output. Um, this is the, the pull-up resistor. This is a Tesla LED, which I'm going to hook up in a minute. And this is the Hall Effect sensor right here. It looks like a little black transistor. And there's the capacitor. 
So, I have a neodymium magnet right here on a screwdriver that's magnetized to a screwdriver just for me to be able to uh, handle it easier and you notice the voltage is 5 volts when I put the magnet near the sensor it drops to 59 millivolts essentially zero now if I put it on the other side of the sensor it has no effect so on this side of the sensor it's uh, pretty dramatic. Now I'm going to hook up the uh, LED and you see the LED is lit and when I put the magnet near the sensor the LED goes out and when the LED is on it's about 1.7 volts because that's a voltage across the LED so it's it's pretty sensitive. I mean, about uh, let's see, about an inch away, you can still pick it up and drop the voltage. Almost a, just about an inch, I would say. And um, so there it is. That's how it works. It's pretty simple. And uh, if you like this video, uh, please please hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.